Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for connecting to the class today. Welcome. And um, uh, just wait for a few moments, I guess, others connecting. And um, okay, let's just uh, pray and get started. Hopefully the others will um, join us soon. Uh, let's just pray together. Can I uh, request somebody to pray? Uh, Jeffina, would you like to pray? If your mic is okay. Okay. Alan, would you like to pray? Not sure what's happening here. All right, I'm not sure. Sir, I pray. Okay, Rebecca, go ahead, please. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for a new day that you have given to your children, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and grace upon your children, Lord. Yes, Father. Lord, I pray for this class that we learn from our pastors, Lord. Holy Spirit, we want your presence among us, Lord. Help us, Lord, and open our mind, Lord, that we understand. Understand your love, Lord, that how much you love your children, Lord. Lord, give your and your knowledge, Lord. Give your wisdom, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us to increase in our in faith in our life, Lord Jesus. Yes, Father, because you are the mighty Father, Lord. Thank you for this new Lord, new day for Lord Jesus that you've given for your children, Lord. Lord, many, many people pass away from this earth, Lord. Yes, Father, but your grace, your great grace, your great mercy that you're doing for your children, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For this day, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord, for your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. And um, thank you, Rebecca, for praying. Uh, okay. So we're going to continue this morning in our uh, study on the subject of faith. Um, Last week, uh, we spent our time, uh, both the lectures, uh, talking about Abraham's walk of faith. We, we looked at uh, the, the journey of faith that Abraham had, and uh, you know we, we, we drew insights or lessons uh, from how Abraham walked in faith. And... God is telling us that we ourselves have to walk in the same steps of the faith of Abraham. So we follow the example that Abraham set for us and how he walked in faith in God. So we follow his example. Today, um, what we want to do is um, just talk a little bit about uh, faith, hope, and love, how these three are related. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a small lesson, and not very big. And then we want to look at the believer's walk of faith, where we want to understand that uh, faith is part of everything we do as believers, uh, that Everything we do comes out of faith in God and has to be based on faith in God. So that's the second lesson we would uh, cover today, um, right? So uh, the first lesson which we're doing uh, is about faith, hope, and love, which is um, simple. It's a very short one. Just want to bring our attention to a few things. And then we will talk about the believer's walk of faith where we are emphasizing that, where we will emphasize that uh, everything we do has to come from a place of faith in God. All right. Now, whatever we've learned about uh, Abraham's walk of faith, the steps of his faith, 
uh, of the faith of Abraham, which we did last week. Uh, I want you to keep it in mind. I want you to, you know, just apply it to your life situation, whatever you're going through. Um, and we're going to revisit uh, that uh, when we outline for us uh, in an upcoming lesson on what are the steps of faith? You know, how do we, if, if you want to exercise your faith for something, how would you go about it, right? Our goal is not to write a formula, uh, but our goal is to outline, uh, you know, this is how you normally would go about exercising faith in God. So, so all of us understand the uh, the steps in the in our walk of faith or uh, the, uh, the, or the journey we have to make in faith as we exercise faith in God. So we will come back to some of those things that we spoke about last week uh, in a future lesson. So today, uh, let's just uh, do a short lesson first on faith, hope, and love, right? Now, uh, the Bible talks about these three aspects, uh, facets to our Christian walk, faith, hope, and love. And I just want us to, um, uh, the main purpose of this lesson is to help us see that these three are interconnected and that while we are on earth, faith, hope, and love are very important for us as believers. Faith, hope, and love. Now, uh, there is a difference between faith and hope. Hope is future dense. That means I am expecting something to happen in the future. For instance, we all hope for our place in heaven. That means it's a, it's a hope in, we have, it's a hope that we know it's not going to be fulfilled right now, but it is something we will have after we leave this world. Uh, whether we, we know, whether we all die and go to heaven or should the Lord Jesus come and take us to heaven, whichever way, it's a hope that we have. That means we know it's there, but it is something in the future. It's there, right? It's We know we cannot have it right now because it's after we leave this place. So it's a hope. Uh, it's a hope of, uh, we, ha we all have the hope of seeing Jesus face to face. Now, it's something in the future. That means one day uh, we will be in the, presence of the Lord in the sense of seeing him face to face. Uh, right now, we are here, we, we, we are living this earthly life. Uh, we know he is with us, but we have the wonderful hope that we will see him as he is, like First John chapter 3, verse 1 says. So there are many things that we hope for. That means there are things out in the future. Now, similarly, uh, like what we have said in terms of the, our Christian hope. Similarly, there is hope of or expectation of things that we want to have in this present life. So what I had just mentioned are things that we hope for in the future life, which is good. It's based on the Bible. But in this present life also, we hope for certain things, meaning that these are things that we want to have or we desire to have. But faith is present tense. And faith is important because faith brings, is connected to this hope. And faith brings this hope into the present, into the reality, uh, into the realm of reality. So hope is in the realm of desire. That means uh, it's an expectation. But faith brings it out from the realm of expectation or desire into the realm of the present. So, for example, uh, somebody may hope uh, that, that you know, let's say a person who is unwell uh, has the expectation of being well. And they, you know, they see themselves well, which is good. That you must have that hope. It is very important. Hope is you know, uh, the, des the desire or the expectation of being well, that's very important. But then faith brings that expectation, that hope into the now. Because faith, we, re we read from the definition of faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. 
it is the substance it is the um, the evidence it, it it you know it's it's the uh, tangible expression of something that's that is in the realm of desire so faith takes what is in the realm of hope or expectation or desire and brings it into the present so for for example some of you may uh, uh, you know may hope that uh, one day uh, you will you know God will use you powerfully in the ministry you know uh, 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 Whatever, maybe, you know, you hope to be a wonderful pastor who will have a wonderful church and minister to many hundreds of people. Or maybe you hope to be a wonderful traveling minister that you'll go many places and travel and preach. Or somebody may have a hope, uh, the desire and expectation to be a very successful businessman or, a you know, or a, whatever profession they are in, maybe a teacher or a educator or whatever they're doing. So that is in the realm of hope. That is in the realm of desire. It's in the realm of expectation. And it is important. Hope is very important because the Bible says hope is the anchor of the soul. That means, uh, you know, uh, um, when, the, when there are storms and winds are blowing, you know, an anchor is steadies you. You know, so it's the picture of a ship. You know, uh, what happens in the ship when, when there's heavy winds and uh, things that are, shaking the ship they drop anchor so the anchor is like a heavy heavy uh usually metal or something that goes down to the reaches deep down to the ocean bed uh, and it steadies the ship so while the storms are blowing you drop anchor so the ship is steady it is not um uh tossed up and then you you know uh, uh, so that's the picture hope the bible says is the anchor of the soul in uh, hebrews uh, chapter six and uh, I'll just give you the reference. So Hebrews, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, verse 19, Hebrews 6, 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. So Hebrews 6, 19, right? It says hope is an anchor of the soul. The soul is our realm of my uh, the realm of the mind emotions and so on so hope is very important from that perspective right so hope is a very important part of our christian life not only in terms of hoping for uh things in the future and the life hereafter but also in the in the in in, in things that we desire in this life which you know we desire in the future but how does faith come in faith brings hope brings that expectation, that desire from a future tense into the present, right? So faith pulls it in and says, okay, I'm going to have it, right? So faith and hope are very important. And many times we begin with hope. You must have hope. A sick person must have the hope or the desire, the expectation to get healed and then they can have faith to bring it in, right? So you need to have hope that you will be a success. You need to have hope, uh, the desire, the expectation that, uh, you know, you will live a fruitful life, a meaningful life for God here on earth. Uh, so you need that. And then uh, when, when you have hope, then your faith begins to work. Your faith begins to work in bringing that hope into the now, to bringing that desire and expectation from a future, from your future, into the present, okay? So, did we all understand that? Faith and hope, uh, did we understand it? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, Divya, you have a question? Yeah, I was uh, also thinking of uh, uh, in 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 biblical terms. Uh, yeah, hope is uh, uh, so. Uh, it is not just a wishful thinking, right? Uh, I wish something would happen, but uh, this is based on what God says. True. Right. That makes the difference, right? Yes. So this is yeah correct as you pointed out. 
uh, this is not a wishful, you know, I wish something good will happen kind of thing. No, hope is also based on the promise of God, right? Now, what undergirds our hope? It's the promise of God. Uh, so let's say you read a promise, and then you visualize, you envision that promise. It's not there in your life right now, right? Example, sick person. Right? He reads the Bible. He says, you know, God forgives our sins and heals all our diseases. So, hey, that means uh, I can be healed. Uh, right now, uh, you know, the person may be suffering some sickness. But hope is uh, hope comes alive. Maybe the doctors also have given up all hope. Right. But hope comes alive because of what God has said. So there is a hope now. Yes, I can be healed. One day I could come out of this sick bed. Right? So the person, based on the promise of God, based on the word of God, the person begins to have this picture of them being well, of being all right, being without the sickness. So they have the hope. Uh, they have the desire coming out. You know, God, I want to be like that, free from the sickness. Uh, it's a desire, it's expectation that has been created based on the word of God, because God said. Same thing, uh, other things in life, you know, in the ministry. Uh, you have the expectation that you will have a fruitful ministry. Why? Because of the word of God. God said that if you abide, you know, if you abide in him, then he said you, you know, Jesus said in John 15, you know, if you abide in him, you will be very fruitful. Right? You will bear much fruit. So I said, God, I want, uh, and Jesus said, I've chosen you that you should go and bear fruit. So you have the expectation that uh, you'll be, you will have a fruitful life and ministry. So various things, you know, whether it's in the family, whether it's for your marriage, whether it's for your children, uh, whether it's for your finances, every area of life based on the promise of God, you have an expectation. That expectation is called hope. It's called, uh, we use the word hope, but that expectation, that desire, that some, one day that will be a reality. That is hope. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Pastor. So it's based on the promise of God. But now, and hope is very important. Because when you have hope, then you can put your faith to work. The problem is people give up without hope. Then if you don't have hope, then you cannot have faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for so if a sick person you know i'm just, I'm just using different uh, life examples so if a person is sick and they've given up hope that means they say lord jesus i'm ready to come home so they have given up hope in this life but they have decided to put their hope in the life hereafter nothing wrong But if they've shifted that hope into the life hereafter, then you can't exercise faith for healing. Because they've said, Lord Jesus, I'm ready to come home. Now that is also hope. But it's a hope of being with Jesus. To die and go. To be with Jesus. It's hope. It's, it's our Christian hope. That is also based on the promise of God. And that is wonderful. But, in that situation, it's difficult to exercise faith for healing because the hope, what they're expecting or what they're desiring or the expectation is, I'm going to be with Jesus. So they've given up hope in this present life. They're not expecting to become well, but they have put their hope in 
the life after, which is fine. That is also part of our Christian hope that we will be with Jesus. That when we die, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. That is also fine. But what I'm saying is, when that is our hope, then Exercising faith for healing here and now is cannot be exercised. Do we understand that? I mean, do we all understand it? Yes, yes, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. So hope is important because faith then works in line with hope and brings what you hope for from the future into the present. So that's why, you know, when people go through difficult things in life, first thing, encourage hope in them. So if a person has, uh, I'm just giving an example, if uh, they're faced a catastrophic failure in life, you know? Uh, maybe they have uh, lost everything. Something happened, you know, and they've lost everything in, li in life. What must we do? We have to bring, revive hope in them. That means, hey, right now, you've lost everything. But can you see a picture of yourself having things restored in your life? And not just restored, but maybe double. It is possible. And we have to bring that hope based on the word of God. So it's not just, hey, have be you know, think positive or positive thinking or you know, just be an optimist. It's not like that. It's based on on the word of God. So we could use, for instance, we could say, hey, look at Job. He went through very difficult times. But the Bible says that God restored to him uh, twice as much as he had. God is no respecter of persons. If God will do it for Job, he will do it for you. So he lost everything. God restored double. So based on the word of God, in that situation where they are very hopeless, or in that situation where they've lost everything, first thing to do is awaken hope. That, that expectation that, yes, it is possible, that things can be restored in my life, maybe even double. Or you can look at Isaiah 61, beautiful passage, verses 1 through 11, uh, where it says, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And uh, and if you read that, it says, you know, uh, uh, he, will, uh, 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 he will give beauty for ashes. So you can tell them, see, right now, your life is in ashes. Whatever's happened has been catastrophic. It has burnt everything down. But the Bible says, God will give you beauty for ashes. Can you see a picture of yourself, of your life being beautified? The Bible says you will become, you know, you'll become the planting of the Lord. And God says later on, I think it's verse 8, he says, uh, instead of your shame, you will have double honor. So you tell them, hey, the Bible says here in Isaiah 61, you will have double honor. Can you can you see yourself having double honor instead of being in a place of shame? Can you see yourself? You know, uh, Isaiah 61 and verse 7. And uh, instead of confusion, you will have joy. So the first thing to do is to awaken hope. That at least you should be able to see. This is not the end, but God can bring something beautiful. So when they're able to see that, and they're saying, God, please do it. Yes, Lord, right now my life is, you know, things have happened like this. 
but I am having expectation that you will make it beautiful. I'm having expectation to give me double honor. I'm having expectation you'll give me joy. Then what happens? So that is the first thing. Awaken hope. Then, okay, let's exercise faith in that hope, to bring that hope into your life. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It gives substance. It makes it reality. Right? Faith gives substance to what is hoped for. So faith and hope work together. They are like twins, <laughs> if you want to say it. like. And uh, hope is the firstborn, and faith comes right after. But they are twins. They work together. Sorry, I'm just using a simple, uh, you know, simple example. You need both. And if people give up hope, that means they don't even have expectation. They don't even have something they desire. It's very difficult to have faith. It's very difficult. Yeah. So, Rebecca, yes, hope is very necessary to exercise faith you know, or increase our faith. It's very necessary. Okay. So, for all of us, always, in every situation, guard your hope. Because hope is the anchor for your soul. Hebrews 6, verse 17, he saw. It steadies you. Then you extend faith. And through faith in God, that hope will become a reality. And one of the best ways to have hope is to capture a picture of it in your mind. That means to see yourself the way God says you will be. You say, how can we do that? Well, God told Abraham, uh, and we talked about this last week, you know, in Genesis 15, Abraham had lost hope because uh, it had been 10 years and nothing was happening in his life. Nothing was going 10 years. He lost hope. So he spoke to God one day, he said, God, you know, uh, what happened to the promise? Um, yeah, so Shani, that's Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17. Or verse 19, sorry. Hebrews 6 verse 19. It says that hope is an anchor for the soul. Hebrews 6, 19. Verse 6, 19, okay? So, Abraham had lost hope, and he was talking to God. He said, God, nothing's happening. And that night, God woke Abraham up, and I'm, 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 I'm uh, referring to Genesis chapter 15. God told Abraham, Abraham, come out of your tent. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. What do you see? And, you know, it was a clear Middle Eastern sky. He saw stars, so many, 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 many stars. And God said, Abraham, that's how many your descendants will be. So God was painting a picture in Abraham's mind of his future. So you can imagine every time Abraham doubted or felt like doubting, he just had to remember that picture, the night sky. 
it had been so to speak photographed in his memory god told me that my future would be like that oh that night i saw so many stars in the sky and god said my future will be like that so he had a picture that was his hope one day my descendants will be like that and with that picture with that hope with that expectation he walked by faith he walked by faith until it became a reality in his life isaac was born and then from isaac came others jacob and he saw and so on so the best way to have hope is to paint a picture of the promise of god for your life have a picture of what your future will look like based on the promise of god so you see yourself living experiencing the promise it it may not be that in your life right now it's okay it's okay because hope is like that hope is in the future it's it's an it's an expectation it's a desire that's out there but it's based on the promise of god and you have a picture of yourself walking in that promise living that promise experiencing that promise and once you have that hope you can then begin to exercise faith because hope is your desired outcome and faith gives substance to things hoped for it brings that out of that realm of hope into the realm of reality and what we are learning is we are learning about faith we, we are learning how to exercise faith and we will be talking about that in future lessons but what i'm emphasizing now is have hope first then based on that hope you're exercising faith so faith and hope are very important they go together but for ourselves and when we are helping other people we need to encourage hope encourage based on the word of god based on the word of god encourage hope even when they, when it seems hopeless at least if they can have some hope then they can exercise faith now connected to this is the whole area of feelings you know what uh, what uh, what place do feelings have now there are times we god created our feelings he created emotions of course and thank god for what we can feel sometimes we feel his presence i mean you you are aware when i say feel means you're aware of his presence but sometimes we don't feel but the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight so when it says not by sight it simply means not by the physical senses so all the physicals not just only what you see but everything else so what i just want to emphasize here is there are times we won't feel anything there are times we we will feel it's nice you feel and there are times you don't feel anything the senses cannot uh, you know recognize things you know you have hope but that hope may not immediately affect your feelings you you still feel terrible you still feel like you know you don't feel any different but that should not your feelings should not feelings should not dictate our faith 
Now we have this uh, incident recorded for us in uh, John the twentieth chapter, and uh, you know verses twenty four to twenty nine. John chapter twenty, verses twenty four to twenty nine. Could somebody read that, please? John twenty, verses twenty four to twenty nine. They could read it from your Bible, please. John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Mm. Amen. Now, just try to imagine this whole scene that's taking place and uh, you know the disciples so Thomas is one of the 12 disciples he has been with Jesus from the start of the ministry till this point one of the 12 now some of the others come back to the group the 12 is, hey, we've, we've seen Jesus. This is after his crucifixion and resurrection. So they said, we've seen Jesus. Now, Thomas is walking by his five senses. There's nothing wrong. You know, we have to walk by our five senses. We do that every day. You know, and in, 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 in we go about our everyday life based on our five senses. Uh, you know, so, okay. Based on his five senses, he says, hey, Unless I see, unless I touch, I won't believe. Now, it sounds very logical because uh, you know how, how how does he know that these other disciples are not making up a story? You know, they're simply saying we saw the Lord. <laughs> we'll get everybody to believe that uh, we saw the Lord. So he's just being cautious. He's just being careful. That's all. So unless I see, unless I touch, I won't believe. And then Jesus appears in the room where these 12 disciples are. And all 12 of them are amazed. They're seeing Jesus. And try to imagine this scene. Jesus turns to one person. He looks at Thomas. Out of all the twelve, he looks at one. Thomas, put your hand. Touch. And notice what he says, verse 27. Do not be unbelieving. Don't be an unbeliever. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And then, you know, Thomas responds. and But then Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So, Believing doesn't have to be based on 
the senses. You and I, when we believe, even when our senses have not given evidence to our believing, Jesus says, you are blessed. And the reason Jesus expected Thomas to believe without seeing is because he had already given the word. Many times he had spoken. Hey, the son of man will be crucified, but after three days I will rise. He had already given the word. So what did he expect Thomas to do? Believe the word. Believe the word. So Thomas was acting very normal. Maybe, like I said, maybe he was just being cautious. But his caution was based on the five senses. But what Jesus wanted us, wanted him to do is to believe based on his word. He has already said, I'm going to rise. The word was already given. So... For us to walk in faith, we must believe even when our five senses cannot give evidence to what we believe. Blessed are those who believed, who have not seen. That means their five senses have not experienced it, but they still believe. Blessed. So, faith and feelings, or faith and the senses. We must believe even when our senses don't give evidence to what we believe. And that's the defi definition of faith, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1, 1, right? The second part of it. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. That means faith believes even though the senses cannot give evidence to it. So one part of our senses is our feelings. So there'll be times when you don't feel. You can still have faith. And you must still have faith even when you don't feel. And that faith is based on the promise of God. It's based on what God has said. Now, thank God when we do have feelings, when you feel, uh, you may feel, you know, wonderful, may feel good and feel this. Okay, that's, that's thank God for it. Enjoy the feelings, it's, it's fine. But remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. Your faith is not in the feelings. Your faith is in the word of God. And you walk by that. Now, in connection to that, uh, the other thing we want to quickly mention, two things I want to mention before we finish this lesson, is faith and doubts. Right. So uh, there are times there will be doubts. Right. And uh, can somebody read for us Mark eleven twenty three? I just want to emphasize one point here. So Mark eleven twenty three. Could somebody read that for us, please? When you believe that God exists and that He loves you and wants to meet your needs, uh, then, uh, then your believing creates faith in your heart. On the other hand, doubt is just as a uh, Sorry, uh, Mark 11, 23. Uh, uh, can you read it from the Bible, please? Uh, this is just uh, some notes I have put. Yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark 11, 23. 23. Yeah. Sorry. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that when they say will happen, it will be done for them. Okay, thank you. So Mark eleven twenty three, right? Jesus said, you know, verse twenty two. He says, "Have faith in God." Then verse twenty three says, "You say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and 
does not doubt in his heart. So, here's the thing. There are times we have to battle doubts. In our journey of faith, in our walk of faith, we will have to battle, fight against doubts. Doubts are an enemy of faith. And doubts come as thoughts to our mind. And one of the key instigator of those doubts is Satan himself. The devil, his demons are at work. They try to cause doubt. How do they try to cause doubt? By putting thoughts that question the promise of God. By putting thoughts that are opposite to the word of God. By putting pictures or imaginations that uh, are opposite to what the promise of God. So, Satan, his demons, cause doubts. And these come and impinge on our mind, in our thinking, in our imagination. So just because you have a doubt come into your mind, just because you have a picture of fear, of unbelief come into your mind, doesn't mean you've lost faith. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23, that we read, you don't doubt in your heart. So you can have faith in your heart even though you're battling these thoughts of doubt and pictures of doubt in your mind. Because the battle will go on. That's, that's the enemy doing it. That's fear coming. So just because you have a battle going on in your mind against those thoughts of doubt, against those thoughts of unbelief, you can still maintain faith in your heart. You know, I believe. I believe in my heart. Of course, these thoughts come to our mind. I believe in my heart. I believe the word of God. I do not doubt in my heart. So you can have faith in your heart while you're battling those thoughts of doubt, those pictures of doubt that are assailing your mind. Because those come from the enemy. He's trying to cause you and me to lose faith, right? but you stand strong. Yes, Shani, your question, please. Yeah, so what about, I guess when somebody doesn't have faith in our heart, then I guess faith can't work. What happens with that? Yeah, so if they, that's true, if they have not yet had, you know, started believing with the heart, so then the, the, the you know, the basic thing applies. They, they have to, you know, start hearing the word of God, hear the promise of God, so that that word can birth faith. So based on that word, they have hope created. And based on that word, faith begins to come into their hearts. So we have to start from there. If they still don't, if they did, they haven't believed yet, then to hear the promise. Look at the promise of God and let the promise of God birth faith in our hearts. Okay, okay I understand. So you're saying yeah. they doubt in their heart to just hear the word so that faith can come and it can birth in her. Okay, I understand. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Yeah. Right. So. So far, what we have spoken of is faith and hope. Both are very important. They are like twins. They, they go together. They work together. Then we talked about faith and feelings. Feelings will come. Feelings will go. You know, it's okay. But your faith is in God's word not on the feelings. Blessed are those who believe, 
group without having seen. So even when there's no feelings, you still believe. And now we're talking about faith and doubts. And what I'm saying is, you know, doubts will come. And very often they, they just come from the enemy. So th he'll keep coming, he, you know, keep putting thoughts of doubt, pictures of doubt, imaginations, doubting the word of God. It keeps coming to our minds, you know, that's just the enemy at work. But you can still have faith in your heart. You don't doubt in your heart. You fill your heart with the word of God because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Fill your heart with the word of God. Guard your faith in your heart. Even though these thoughts of doubts come in the mind. And we just reject those thoughts of doubt. You know, you doubt your doubts. You say, no, doubt, I reject it. God is good. God is a God who cannot lie. God's word is truth. I am settling on the word of God. So you reject those doubts. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to take a little break now. Uh, all right. Okay. I see Divya's question. Uh, right. So we will pick up both these questions, the Devia's question and the question from Isaac. Um, as soon as we get back from our break, yeah, just 10 minute break, we'll come back and we'll pick up with these questions. Okay. Thank you. Let's just take a quick break. <laughs> 